Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. And today, we're being joined by Debbie Allen, author of Success is Easy. Debbie, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here, Paul. Love to talk about books. Well, we are thrilled to have you. Are you ready to begin? I am. Let's rock it. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Well, I think most people, when they start writing a book, is they don't have an overview. And it's hard to look at the entire overview of a book when you haven't written it yet. So you have to just do an outline. Uh, one of the best ways I've worked, even on my ninth book, was actually having kind of a VIP day with a book uh, coach. And I suggest that if you get a good book coach that can actually walk you through getting a title and a subtitle, breaking down the chapters and getting a whole feel for the book. We, we, we knocked out so much in a day that I was ready to hit the ground running uh, with, with having that outline. And I think that's the key is a lot of people think they can just do it by themselves and they think that there's writer's block, but I don't think there's any such thing as writer's block. And when you have the outline and you have a good uh, start to that, you know, you can just start chunking it down and, and writing it very quickly. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Well, a lot of people think when they're starting out that they're going to go get a major publisher and they spend a lot of time like, okay, I'm going to get this major publisher. A very, very small percentage of first-time authors were going to get a major publisher. Uh, and, and even if you think you're going to, go ahead and get a publish yourself. Learn how to get it self-published. And now there's just so many ways that you can get published online very quickly on print on demand. So just, you know, don't make that as an excuse. Just write the book, get it done. You can always improve on it. You can always build upon your expertise, your social media following, and get it out there. You know, what major publishers are looking for now is you you have to have a large social media following. They're going to go to your social media sites and check it out. Uh, they're going to look at your websites. They're going to look at your expertise and your background and know if you're out there speaking on that platform. They basically want to know that you're going to sell books. Uh, so, you know, first, don't wait for that. Get out there, self-publish it with print on demand and, and, and then get it better. Just keep improving it. Uh, I have one book I've done three times over. You can change the cover, you can self publish it. I self publish one of my books called Confessions of Shameless Self Promoters, got it out there, did very well with it. And then I sold it to a major publisher. They changed the cover and I updated it. It was, it was a simple way to go. Well, one of the things we talked about prior to this interview was the fact that, of course, you have nine books out, which is great. And the fact is you've also worked with multiple um, publishers. So tell us a little bit about that transition because you've gone both through the self-publishing journey through to this publish, you know, working with publishers and then working with multiple publishers. So tell us a little bit about that journey and how that evolved over time. Right. So before I didn't really have a platform, I was starting out as a speaker. I believe you're a speaker or an author or an author speaker. It goes both ways. If you're an author, they want to hear you speak. If you're a speaker, you need a book for credibility. So I started out as a speaker and then I'm like, okay, I got to write a book. Uh, and I self-published it. I didn't think I was a good writer at all because my English teacher said, you're, you're not even going to pass high school if you don't pass this next test. So you kind of have that in your head. You're not a good, you know, that you couldn't possibly write a book. Um, but that didn't stop me. I, I, I really started out writing a book with interviews. So I interviewed people that I thought were successful on that topic. Uh, and that made me feel more comfortable. So the first couple of books I wrote were more of anthology type of books with interview process. And then I started writing more and more. And it wasn't until my third or fourth book that I actually wrote the entire book myself. Um, and then I actually got a publisher in a super easy way that I wish I could just wave the magic wand and make that happen for all of you is they found me on a Google search. So what does that tell you? It tells you that I put myself as an expert first. They were looking for experts that could write certain types of books. So there's a New York agent that was trying to find the right kind of experts that could write a book that they could then turn around and sell to a major publisher. So that's how I did it. And she reached out to me and wanted me to write a book on sales. At the time I was more of a marketing expert, but I agreed to write a book on sales uh, just for more opportunities. Um, also, if she would also republish one of my other books. 
And so I work with that publisher, uh, that agent, getting me different publishers for quite a few years. On my last book, she just didn't like any idea I had, and it just seemed like it was a challenge. And I, I'm glad that that happened because I really didn't have the right idea for the book. Um, and when I did, the timing just was right that somebody introduced me to Entrepreneur Magazine, which was my absolute dream publisher. Uh, I look at, I would read Entrepreneur Magazine and think, oh my gosh, it would be a dream to have my book in there. And I had, I had absolutely no idea. Um, but another expert that had written books for them had introduced me personally to them. I gave them the idea for my book. They actually bought the idea on the phone call um, and bought, <laughs> said, we want to do this book. When can you get us the book proposal? Because it wasn't even done. And um, so I think if you have the right expertise, sometimes the right connections that get you that publisher, um, then you can go quickly. You know, otherwise don't think that you can't reach out to uh, publishers when you know it right. But I, I think the hardest thing of writing the book is the book proposal. So you might want to hire somebody that writes you a good book proposal and then write the book. And that's kind of what I did even on that ninth book. Well, let's talk about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launches that has worked well. Well, there's a lot of pieces to the marketing of it. And a lot of people say, I'm gonna take this time to write the book. But the thing is that writing the book is the easiest part of it all. The marketing stuff is a lot of work and people aren't willing to put the work in. Well, why would you not put the work in to market your book if you're gonna take all that, take all that time to, mar to, to write it? So it started, you know, it started being marketed from like day one. From I, I had the idea, I got the publisher, I started promoting that on social media, started building the book website, um, and started creating, you know, video tips for it. And starting with opt-ins, I created uh, a live event. I created a live uh, book signing event to launch it as well and did it like a really first class event. It doesn't have to be, but you know, launching it, making it big, making a big hit why I wanted the video for that to continue to promote. So, you know, I think like a marketer. So from the very first day I wrote the book, it was all about marketing because I don't think you should even write a book unless it fits your strategy of your business, unless you're writing a novel. I mean, otherwise the book has got to fit your business brand and your direction. What is the goal for the book? Because the book is going to be a lead generation for getting clients into whatever else you're doing. And that has to be the strategy from day one. Well, and you hit the nail on the head exactly. It's marketing from day one, and you're having that mentality and making sure that everything else aligns with that, with yourself, your business, and your brand. Most definitely. And, and the only reason I wrote the ninth book, like, yeah, you know, I got eight books. I don't need nine, right? <laughs> so now I think I have, to have ten because I have to have an even number. Uh, and then, you know, it's interesting that people are reaching out to me now going, I want to co write a book with you. So I'll probably do that on my tenth one just to make it easier. Uh, but, you know, the thing is that. I didn't really need to write it, but there was another thing I wanted to do. And so the strategy of success is easy isn't really the funnel of what I teach, but it was going to get me on more paid speaking stages. Um, and so that, you know, is a more of a general market book. And so that was very specific that that was going to be a book. And then that was going to be a speaking a, for paid speaking, my number one keynote. And then I would do different seminar topics around the different chapter titles. I would create a new speaker demo seminar around that. So to get the new demo, I did my own seminar and invited a small group of people. We did a full day video shoot to get a great demo video uh, to do speaking. But that book was written specifically for paid speaking. I mean, it will have an online course, but it's not my, it's not my main brand. I hope that makes sense, Paul, because it does. it's like every time I write a book, it's got to, you know, it's going to go, it's going to lead to a workshop that leads to a, a consulting program, or it's just going to do just paid speaking in an online course. But if you know exactly what the other funnels are from that book, um, and you can see that vision from the beginning, that's where you'll start with the whole vision of it. My other book, um, Highly Paid Expert, is one of my best selling books because it was a book, an online course and a workshop as soon as it launched. And I've been doing that workshop, the highly, highly Paid Expert Workshop. Now I've been doing it for about, I think I'm on seven years now. So, you know, that's that's my main consulting business. So you have to, you know, know where, where the end result is going to lead for people. It's not just I'm reading a book. That was great, put it down. Uh, it led to some action that you took that led to a transition 
or transformation in your life. That's when it is really powerful. Well, your life and your business. I was going to say too, essentially what you're doing is you're creating the funnel around your book and you're doing something different with each one because that's a strategy that we utilize. I've got 15 of my own books and each of those books that we created a funnel around it and what we were offering. And when you have, when you're able to do that and put all these different pieces together, I mean, it's just, it's a huge game changer. Yeah. And you just gave me another idea. Maybe that's my next book. I just did, I just did a webinar series and I'm thinking, well, that was a good title. And what else should I do with that? And so maybe I, I reverse engineered it and it's going to be the next book. So, Hey, I've already got an idea from you, Paul. Hey, we're, we're happy to help. And speaking of books, I, I do want to know what is, um, I'd like to know about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Okay, I'm going to give you two because one is um, one that changed my life personally and the other one changed my business and my income. So the one that changed my life when I was going through a very hard time in my life, you know, going through a divorce, going through a really, you know, really, really challenging time, um, I read the book by Barbara DeAngelis called Real Moments. And Barbara DeAngelis eventually became a speaker who was on my stage, one of my events, or a number of my events, actually. And I actually, actually hired her as a personal, uh, personal development coach for myself. She totally transformed my life. And when I read the book, Real Moments, is I realized that I was so stressed out and so stuck in a dysfunctional life at that moment that I wasn't having any real moments. I, I couldn't. I couldn't even function, but I didn't know I couldn't function. I was just getting through day by day until I read in the book about little things that we were not paying attention to. And I was out walking with my mom one day and I said, did you hear that? And she goes, what? I said, did you feel that? And she goes, what? I said, did you hear the birds sing? And did you feel the wind on your face? And she's like, uh, well, yeah. And I went, wow, I'm tapping into real moments that I was so tuned out because of all the stress. Um, so that dramatically changed my life because I realized I needed to change my life and get out of that dysfunctional relationship. So that was my number one, Real Moments by Barbara DeAngelis. That's an older one of her older books. My personal one was Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. Um, and the reason that one really shifted my is because I started making a lot of money in my life. I was like spending it and I would really realize that I was actually creating the same habits that my dad had. Like you really didn't feel comfortable with having a lot of money and you were just spending it to like get rid of it. And I realized that I hadn't learned how to really control money. And it was uh, learning the secrets of the millionaire mind. Uh, then I actually went to uh, T.R. Beckard's um, Millionaire Mind Intensive live event. And then I spent $20,000 to get into a program with him. So do I know that books work? You know, it's like, because it, it, you know, it will monetize when the funnel, when there's some kind of transformation. It might start from a $20 book that leads to going to an event or getting mentoring or a course, but uh, so powerful because when you get a book, it really taps into what you're looking for. You just go, what's the next step? I want more of this. And for our final question, what is your favorite quote and why? Uh, my favorite quote, I have a little a bracket on my desk that says this. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Uh, so anytime I might doubt myself or think something's risky, I'm like, okay, well, what would I do? Well, how could I push myself or be a little more edgy or take a risk? Um, if I had those, you know, the super cape, the superwoman cape on, I couldn't fail. I would just jump in and do it. So that's always my inspiration. Well, Debbie, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? They go to my website, remember my name, DebbieAllen.com. Pretty easy, D-E-B-B-I-E-A-L-L-E-N.com. And from there, they can follow me, get my complimentary uh, client action uh, success uh, strategies, my webinars, all kinds of good stuff that's there, even for a lot of free training to start out with. Debbie, thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you, Paul. Same with you. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works, grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.